Hey guys, today we're gonna do five things you don't know about GNL. This is the most requested five things video I've received since doing these type of videos. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna do this video right. So I drove to Fullerton, California to talk to the owner of GNL Guitars to find five interesting facts you may not already know. Number one, the first thing you need to know about GNL Guitars, they're on Fender Avenue. In 1966, Leo Fender started CLF Research while his office, lab, and workshop were still at Fender CBS. But in 1967, he bought some property to build some commercial rental units on and named the street alongside of them Fender Avenue. He made this company because he had sold Fender to CBS and had a 10-year non-compete with a five-year consulting gig. There he would design products for Music Man, who he helped start and fund, and of course, Fender Guitars. Later, he would start g &L Guitars. Number dose. This is actually a fun one, and I'm sure GNL fans will already know this answer, but I think it's interesting. On the headstock or on the logo of GNL, that is not the and sign. It's not GNL, it's G, a staff, a music staff, and an L. An interesting little play on the way something should look, but what's funny is I think it's fooled many guitar players for many years. You just see an and sign because that's the way it should look, but if you look at it a second time, you'll realize they used a treble clef. Number three, the GNL ASAT. This has been an interesting subject for players for many years to see what does it stand for. Some players think it stands for another strat, another telly, after strat, after telly. It just goes on and on. But believe it or not, it doesn't stand for anything. But in fact, it was originally launched in 1985 as the GNL Broadcaster. It had to be renamed due to a Gretsch trademark issue, a repeat of the Fender Broadcaster situation in 1950. So it was renamed the ASAT after the Asset missile, an anti-satellite missile that projected power and dominance. Number four, the original GNL headstock looked a little different. It took George Fulton a little while before he came up with the elegant headstock we know them as today. George was, a, he was still trying to work on the idea of having some sort of hook right. embellishment, but he wasn't there. While George designed a new headstock, Leo came up with some interesting new bridges. Obviously, the GNL Two Point Bridge is an impressive bridge that is revered as being one of the best that stays in tune. To this day, it has not been modified, nor does it need to be. But he also came up with a hardtail bridge called the Saddle Lock Bridge. You can adjust the saddles individually and get the guitar perfectly intonated, then use an Allen screw to lock them together so they become one cohesive piece. On top of that, the bridge is cast so that it has a piece that goes into the body to transfer as much of the vibration in the body. Listen to Dave, the CEO of GNL, as he explains Leo's theory. One of Leo's big deals in the design of the instrument is how do I maximize sustain, meaning resonance. I want this thing to be as resonant as possible, you know, you pluck it, it goes, it's alive, it lasts as long, right? So a big part of that is, how do I capture the string energy over here on the bridge? How am I gonna get this from here into the body? Well, how about we'll just take a, the big, a big bridge plate, we will cast it so we can have a foot part that goes into the, into the body. Right. So now all I have to do is I'm gonna put my saddles on, I'm gonna have a border around the saddles such that I can have the little set screw, right. squish them together. So now it's all, once you set, you set your intonation and your height, it's like you just lock that thing down. Now it is one mass. It is not like little bits and bobs. Now it's locked together. Your string is activating one big mass that is injecting its, its, its resonance right into the end grain of the wood in a very efficient package. This is what Leo became really focused on when working on some of the GNL guitars. He was trying to increase the sustain, something that musicians had complained that lacked in some of the Fender guitars before that. This and all his designs were his evolution on taking some of the complaints musicians had about his original instruments and making them sustain more and have less issues in clubs and arenas around the world. That brings us to number five, the Tribute Series. The Tribute Series is the import version of GNL, and it has some interesting stories and facts, and I want to share them with you. The first thing, of course, is they're a tribute to the GNL line because they're made overseas. GNL import guitars are made by Court. Court is a very known well import brand and makes guitars for companies like Paul Reed Smith and Ibanez and countless others. A lot of the models actually come with American made pickups. They send the pickups to Court guitars to install them. 
To keep costs down, they don't use the same hardware, but they actually use replicas of the hardware and the same design. So you're not getting a subpar bridge or a subpar piece of equipment. You're getting something that is a tribute to the American series. Something they seem highly focused on when it comes to the tribute line because just like it has the original GNL logo, to them, it's another part of their history and Leo's as well. Right. But what I'm not going to do is have a bunch of stuff that I'm embarrassed by. I'm just not going to deal with it. This is, yeah, so this Tribute Series one, so when they come in, uh, they go to another warehouse space first because, you know, the containers are large. Right. And then what we do is we just break it down and sort of work small working inventory here. So this right. is where the U.S. dealer orders are processed, and then they bring them out, they inspect them, they get set up. I would imagine that's part of the benefit of dealing with a legitimate partner like Cortec, you know what I mean, yeah. company who's got a good reputation, it makes yeah, qualities, sure. it's not going to start making chairs next week. <laughs> you know, we've known them for so long. There's not that many people that really make all this stuff go around in our business. And we right. all know each other, or mostly know each other, or know right. about each other substantially. The court people we've known personally for, I mean, shoot, I've known court people since I was like 12 or something, you know? Right. Just from growing up in the business. But they're very cool. But we... We have to be pushy for what we want. They were pushy for what they want. It's what we do. So not only did they make sure they got it right by using American pickups in the guitars and using the original designs of the bridges on those guitars so that they'll feel and play like the American counterparts. They've used Cortec all these years. Even though some players are familiar with originally GNLs being made in Korea and now made in Indonesia, that is only because Cortec had moved locations. GNLs never stopped using the original supplier. Well, there you go. Five things you didn't know about GNL guitars. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you'd like to see more like this, you can go ahead and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to learn more about this subject, click the link down below to see the video Fender Music Man GNL, how did it fit together? And of course, more updated videos on this subject coming soon. As always, guys, I want to thank you so much for your time. And until next time, know your gear. Want even more information on gear? Go to the link down below and check out our website for weekly articles.